Okay, I think that should be our sound. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Give me a little thumbs up. Give me a little thumbs up. Give me a little thumbs up that you can hear my sound. So I've got the mic here. Hopefully you can hear me. Fingers crossed. Is there sound? Is there sound now? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, let's double check. I'm just double checking. Once we've got sound going, we're going to get roaring. Can hear no sound. Is there sound now? Yes. There we go. There we go. There you go. Mike wants to operate. Well, hello. We'll do it again. Good morning. It's Wednesday. Sound is working and I'm Bobby Seagull. So excited to hear, to be with Explore Learning um, for a fantastic session. A fantastic session today. Um, so just to reiterate, my name is Bobby Seagull, school maths teacher, author of this book, you know by now, and a presenter for the BBC series, Monkman and Seagull's Genius Adventures. So with Explore Learning, we're all about being fearless. And we've had an amazing past eight weeks. Um, but today is that this is the last week, is the last week of sessions. So I wanted to say a, a big thank you to all of you. Um, Key Stage 1 on Mondays, Key Stage 2 today, and we still have one more session on Friday in Key Stage 3. So I, I'm sad to be finishing, but you can still watch all the lessons again on the Explore Learning website. And you can always go to explorelearning.co.uk to book a free trial. Um, uh, and Explore Learning members get one-to-one -one tuition alongside live lessons uh, on maths and English in our exclusive members area. And again, I'll share more details later, but I'm going to post... Um, I do a lot of educational stuff, like my Monkman and Seagull Genius Guide, Geography, History. And if you're ever interested, I'll pin it on the page for now. After the lesson, or during it, give me a follow on facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. And again, if you're a Twitter user, we're Explore Tutors, and we're Instagram Explore Learning underscore official. And myself, I'm at Bobby underscore Seagull. Again, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok. And obviously, you're here on Facebook and some on YouTube. Um, do follow me or give me a like and you follow all my educational work. Okay, so today's lesson, I'm so excited. So it's going to be about problem solving, but we're going to go back in time. We're going to go back in time. Okay, so uh, before we get cracking, before we get cracking, a bit of context about what today's session is. So today's session is all about World War II. World War II. And we're going to step back in time. So does anyone remember what VE Day is? VE Day. VE Day. Does that ring a bell? VE Day. VE Day. So this is um, on the 8th of May 2020 this year. We celebrated the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe. And that's when Britain and the Allied forces won in uh, World War II. So that day, VE Day. So we're going to be looking going to become code breakers. I'm going to give you really a little extract, and this is really exciting. This is really exciting. So I've got a book here on maths. So I'm going to show you a picture. Have a look at this. It's like show and tell in school. So can you see that building there? That building there? That is Bletchley Park. Bletchley Park. And I'll tell you what this is all about. In January 1945, as World War II was drawing to a close, 9,000 people worked in a single site on a single project. In the early 1970s, apart from the people directly involved, there was still practically nobody who knew about its work or importance. And you're going to join them today. And I'll tell you why this is so important. So, with an enormous combination of intelligent guesswork, mathematical analysis, resilience to failure, and mechanical, not to mention human power, the British were able to intercept and decipher a large proportion of German radio traffic. Intelligence which, historians believe, shortened the war by at least two years. That's amazing. So today you're going to be forming a part of a team with me and we're going to head back in time. We're going to head back in time. So are we all excited? Gabriel, Alexander, Sean, Shivan, Cledwin, are we all ready? Beatrice, are we all ready to head back in time? So before we do that, we're going to do a little, you know, you know, uh, you know a thing, you know a thing. Okay, so remember, people often say they can't do maths, they come with the cross. Come on, come on, but we know what it is. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. We'll do that two more times because today we need you to be ready and when we're, when we're there, we need to be very careful. Three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Last time. One, two, three, go. 
Yes, I can do your maths. Yes, I can do your maths. Yes, I can do maths. We can do it. So today's session, let's get ready. We're going to go back in time. We're going to get back in time. So we're going to head back in time to 1945. 1945. We're going to help the war effort. But I'll tell you what's really important. Um, we need to make sure we look the part because we were going to go, we're going to go incognito. People won't be able to tell that we're from 2020. Okay, so I'm going to change my outfit. I've got a waistcoat, but I'm going to put on my, um, my jacket that looks, my jacket that looks a bit like, hold on, get my jacket. This looks a bit like 1945. Yeah, you think so? And I got my tie. It's a special tie. Ellie's ready. Um, Lily's excited. So is Nathan and uh, Nathaniel, I think. Okay. You got my jacket? Does it look like 90? Okay, I look 1945. Okay, what else do we need? Um, I'm going to take a cap to fit in. I'm going to keep uh, an umbrella, an umbrella. So I look like, hello, oh, good day, good day. We're going to we're gonna fit in. I'm going to keep um, a little pipe because just in case someone comes to talk to me, because you know, we're doing some spy work, I'll pretend I'm smoking so I can't talk. So I'll keep that pipe with me um, and I'll keep some glasses. I'll keep some glasses um, just in case I don't be able to see what my eyes are. So I'm going to get this. We're all ready, we're gonna go back in time. So we're going to get in this car. We're gonna get in this car, but we're gonna work out how fast we need to go. So have a look at this. You got people got brownies, good. So this is back to the future. We're gonna get in this car. We're gonna travel back in time from now to 1945. But we need to get the car, the DeLorean car at a certain speed. So you have to do a calculation for me, ready? Are you ready? This calculation needs your help. I know. Uh, Lily's worried about me smoking. I'm not smoking, but I just need to pretend. I'm going to pretend so that if someone comes by, I'll be like, so look, I look the part. Okay, so, so here it is. So think of the smallest double digit number. What's the smallest double digit number? Okay, I want you to now double that, double that number. Okay, double that number. Double it again. You got me? Double it again. And add eight for me. What do we get? So you got the smallest double digit number. Double it. Double it. And double it again. And add eight. And that's the speed we need to go. What speed? Come on. Come on, add eight. Lynn's got 80 and add eight, add eight, add eight. And we get 88 miles an hour. If you've got that, get in the car, get in the car, get my glasses on. Let's go, we'll go, go. We haven't got much time to go. We need to solve some mysteries. Let's go. Okay. 50, 70, 80, 85, 88. Woo. I think, boys and girls, I think we're here in 1945. You know what I can tell? I'm checking my phone and there's no there's no reception here. We're in 1945. Okay, so we are now in Bletchley Park. We're in Bletchley Park. And this is really exciting because we are part of the war effort. We're part of the war effort. And you know what? I found something. I found something. Be very quiet because again, this is all part of spy work. I found a suitcase, a briefcase. I found a briefcase. And this briefcase, the Nazis left this. The Nazis left this. And actually in this, there's information that will help us end the war. But you're, there's three digits that we need to work out, three digits that we need to work out to unlock it. And if you're thinking, let's just smash it open. If we smash it open, it destroys all the documents. So I've got this, yeah? And we're gonna try and work out the, we're gonna try and work out the code. So this is what we're gonna be checking occasionally, okay. Umbrella, okay, here we are, here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that we, we we're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a bit quieter sometimes because I'm worried that people might come walk by. So to be very careful. I'll take my hat, take my hat off. Okay, so we'll do some calculations just to get your brain ready. Just to get your brain ready. Okay, are you ready? So five calculations. So two times seven. Fourteen. Good. Shout at the screen. Eight times five. Forty. Good. Seven times six. 42. Good. I need to make sure you're on the same team as me. 8 times 7. 8 times 7. 56. Good. 
if you've got a few of them right, I think you're okay in my team. So we're gonna, here's a few, here's a problem that we've got. So we found out that we received 78 messages. We received 78 messages, yeah? 78 messages. And each message, I've been told, is 13 words long. So 78 messages, and each message is 13 words long. And this is important, I only need your help today if there are more than 1,000 words. Can you work out for me using any method you want? There are 78 messages, and each message has 13 words. Do we have more than 1,000 words? Go on, work it out for me, come on. 78 messages, 13 words. What operation do we need to do? Worded problem here for me. 78 messages, 13 words. Be quiet. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to quietly work it out myself. So I think this is going to be a multiplication. Use any method you want. You can use uh, column or grid, okay? So 78 messages, 13 words. I'm going to do the working out myself. Be quiet about it. Is it more than 1,000? That's all we need to know. Lily said there's more than a thousand, so there's Colin. What do you reckon? I'm going to go double check it myself. I've got to be careful. And I trust you, but I need to make sure for myself. Okay, I'm getting more than a thousand, which is good. I'm getting a thousand and fourteen. Thank you, Nedco. Thank you, Susan. thousand and fourteen. And that means I, I need you, because if it was less than that, we wouldn't need you on the team today. So good. So good. We've done the first part. I think I can hear someone. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna put my disguise on. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We're, we're, we're okay here. We're just um, we're just checking the operations of the machine. I th I thought I heard something. I thought I heard something. We don't want to get caught because we need to. Remember, we've got to get the code. There. There's a few bits of information. There's a few bits of information. Okay. So now we've got another task. We've got another challenge that's come through. This is an important task. So this task. It's going to give us the first code for that, for this. It's going to give us the first code. Let's have a look. So, this is on Roman numerals, this task, this challenge. I hope you remember your Roman numerals. And I haven't got, and I remember earlier when I did a march, I haven't got time for that. I'm going to have to recap some of the key things. So, remember Roman numerals, do you remember what the, the key numbers were? 1 is an I, isn't it? Do you remember that? V is, what was V? What was X? Come on, we'll do a quick revision review. X is that, and we've got L and then C. Do you remember what these stood for? V, X, L, and C. Do you remember what this means? These are Roman numerals. We did this a few weeks ago. Okay, come on. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Eloa. I, uh, there is no one there, but I just had to make sure that no one caught us. So what do we have? What do we have? So we've got one is I. Come on. Roman numerals. I need some help. X is 10, says Susan. Well done. Good. We've got 10. What other ones do we have? Sean says V is 5. Good. Anything else that we have? Anything that we have? Um, we have we've got L and C. They're a bit trickier. L is X times V. X times V. So if you missed this, it's VCAP. L is X times V, which is 50. And then C is for century. Well done, John Jeffries is 100. Okay. So these are the things that we have. And here's going to be the first code the first code that we need. So you have to add the following numbers for me. Add them for me. Add them for me, first of all. So you have to add this. XV, LX, and C and I. Add those for me. Convert them to numbers and add it. Come on. So you've got these numbers. I'm going to check those here. So you've got to add these numbers. XV, LX, and CI. Convert them to numbers, add it. And I want you to tell me the last digit. So add them for me, add them for me. I'm going to go and check. It's still okay, it's still okay. Come on, come on, add them for me. So I'm going to add them for me. So L, I'm going to do them as well quietly. So XV is, XV is 15, yeah? XV is 15. 
And what's LX? LX is, I'm being a bit quieter today because you've got to be really careful. Um, LX is 50 and the 10. That is 60. Well done, Sean. And then the last one is C and the I. C and the I. So if you're, this is new, this is a, it's a tricky topic. This is about Roman numerals. LX is 50 and the 10. 50 and the 10. Oh, we've done that already. The C and the I is 100 plus the 1, 101. Okay, if we add them together, we get 6. Do you get 176? Do I get 176? Let's have a look. Am I adding this up? Yeah, 15, 6, 7, 176. I get 176. Ooh, why am I getting different numbers? Someone's saying. So it's 15 plus 60 is 75 plus 101. It's 176. Okay, thank you, uh, Lily. 176. So we need the last, remember the code was, we need the last digit. So I'm going to write down, the last digit is 6. I'm going to put this on the board here. I'm going to put it here on the board. Can you see? 6. Okay, we've got the first digit. We've got the first digit. Okay, Ellie, well done. We're going to move on now. We're going to move on. So uh, that was Roman numerals. So we got that down. We got that down. So again, if that was new, you could always come back and recap the week on time where we did Roman numerals. So we've got one digit. Let me see if let me see if I can unlock it. No, it's too risky. If I, I think if you have more than four or five goals, this could could get damaged. You can't afford that. Okay. So um, I've been given some instructions. Instructions, where does it come through? It's coming through by Morse code, and the instructions are telling me that there's some fractions problems that we've got to look at. Some fractions. They want to just check. They want to check that we're legitimate because they're concerned that we got into Bletchley Park, some of the best code breakers. And they want to check whether you're good enough to be here. Okay, and I think you are. Come on, let's do this. So it says, um, they're giving us a message from HQ. Let me check what the message says. Have I got the message? Have I got the message? Okay, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. It's come through. So the message says, we have 12 planes and two thirds of them are in a good state. How many are in a good state? So we've got 12 planes, two thirds of them are in a good state. How many of them are there? How many are in a good state? So 12 planes and two thirds are in good state. How do we work this out? How do we say that? So remember we recently read about the, the number on the top is the numerator. I've got to be very careful about you know, making too much noise. Okay, I think I've got a few answers. So remember what we do is we can split up the 12 into three whole parts because the denominator tells you how many parts there are. And each part is worth four. And then as John Jeffries said, and Ned Cohen Gianti, we've got two of these, it's eight. Good, good, eight. So it's eight for that. Okay, let's have a look at another problem. We're, just, we're gonna send it back to them. We're gonna send it back to HQ. I think they're happy with that. Okay, they've given us one more problem. They've given us one more problem. And then we can move on. Because again, time is against us. Time is against us. Because we need to crack this. Remember that we can save the war by two years. So next one is, We've got how many? I'm just, going to, I'm just going to check through them now. Hold on. I'm going to check here. It says we've got 200 soldiers. 200 soldiers there. And three quarters of them are going to be deployed to France. Three quarters are going to be deployed to France. How many are deployed further east? So we've got 200 in total. We've got 200 in total. And three quarters are deployed to France. How many? are going further east. So Kenny's, so there's all the soldiers we have. So we've got 200, let's have a look at this, come on. Come on, let's have a look. Got to get this right. We need to tell them correctly how many instructions. So 200 soldiers all together. Um, small is a small group. Three quarters are going to France. So how many are going further east? How many are going further east? Okay. So this is similar to the last problem. So similar. Hold on, I'm gonna go and quickly check that we're good. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, so I've got a few answers coming through. Well done. So what we do for fractions is it's three quarters. So you can do it in different methods, but I will only draw a little above. There's four of them, yeah? So there's 200, we split it up into four parts. Split up into four parts. Bo, you got that? So 400, each one is gonna be 50. 200 divided by And they said they tell us three quarters are, are soldiers that are going to France. So this last bit, 
that's not going to France. So actually, we know it's 50. 50 are going further east. Let me, so Isabella, 150 are going to France, and 50 are going further east. So I think we got that. Let me just send that through to HQ. Um, we're sending, um, Explore Learning have told me that we're sending 50 further east. Is that correct? Good. Okay, I think we're good. So it's 150 to France and the 50 further east. Good. Okay. We're going to get our second code. We're going to get our second code. Are you ready? It's going to be our second code. So we've got one so far. We've got six there. Are you ready for our second code? Okay. It's really, te I think really tense today because we're under a lot of pressure, but again, as long as we think calmly and clearly, remember? Yes, we can do that. So we can do that. So we've got to think really clear, clearly and calmly. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm getting through the next code. Okay. This is a time-based code. So at 10 to 10, at 10 to 10, the time is 9.50. The time is 9.50. And what this is telling us now, the information, let me just double check the information. This is an audio piece that I can hear. So this is a watch, but it's disguised. It's disguised. You have to believe me that this watch is transmitting information. So what it's telling me is that they're doing spot checks for equipment. They're doing spot checks for all our military equipment. And they're doing spot checks at regular times, at regular times, and they want us to tell us the sixth time that they're reading checks, okay? They're reading, so let's do that. So Gabriel and Alexander, we're gonna work out the sixth time. So we know the first time is 9.50. Okay, I've got, I've got the information, I've got the information. So we're gonna keep that code, we're gonna keep that and come back to it later. So they tell us, the information I know is 9.50, 10.40, 11.30, and 12.20. These are the four times they do their spot check. I need to know, when is the sixth time? We can use the number at the front of this. This number here is going to form a code. So can you work it out? So not the fifth one. Not the fifth one. So have a look at the times. So this forms a sequence using time. So we need to work out the sixth time when they do their military spot checks. We've got to make sure we're on time for this. Okay. So the 9.50 to 10.40, that is how many minutes? That's 50 minutes. Then 10.40 to 11.30, that's 50 minutes. Then that's 50 minutes. So you can see it's going up in 50s. So Jayanti is correct, and uh, Dem Demelza. Uh, it's so 110 or 13, 13, 10, 13, 10 or 110 is the first one. And we add 50 to that again. We add 50 to that and we get 1400, 1400. But we're going to have to convert this time, 1400, back to normal 12 hour clock. So that's 2 p.m. So 2 p.m. is going to be the sixth spot check. So you see that number there? We're going to add it to that code. So we've got two, six and two. Okay? So we've got two numbers. We've got two numbers. I think we're doing well. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to stay in patterns and sequences. So just to quickly, just check that we're all confident pattern sequences. This is the initial pattern. So, shh, 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 shh. So it's left finger, shh, right finger, shh. Then listen out with your left ear. Left finger, shh, right finger, shh. And listen with your left ear. So that is a repeating pattern. That's a repeating pattern. So that's the code word. If you ever need to get back in here, Shh, shh. And if you do that for me, I know that you're part of Explore Learning. We're fearless today, okay? Okay, so we're gonna try and get, we're gonna get the third code in a bit. We're gonna get the third code. We're gonna get the third code, let's have a look. Third code. We do a quick bit of recap, a quick bit of recap to make sure we know what sequence is all about. So, we've got a really basic sequence here. Three, six, nine, twelve. What do you say this is? Three, six, nine, twelve. What do you say the next number in the sequence is? So three, six, nine, twelve. Remember? And if you do that, I know that you're part of our team. Ooh, one second, I think someone's coming. Yeah, everything's fine here. Everything's fine. We've got everything under control. We're under control here. Um yeah, thank you. I was worried, I thought someone was going to come. 
We're under undercover here. We're undercover. We've got to be really careful. Okay. Three, six, nine, twelve. Good. I've got Martin and Sarah uh, and Nedko saying it's 15. Good. This is going up in three. It's the three times table. How about this one? 64, 32, 16, 8. What's going on here? 64, 32, 16, and 8. What's going on here? What's going on here? We're, okay, she wants to ask why are we undercover? Because we've come back, we've travelled back in time to 1945 and we're helping out the code breakers at Bletchley Park and we've managed to intercept a Nazi suitcase which has information that could help decrease the war by two years. So we've got to be undercover, so we've got to be very careful. Otherwise, people work out that we're from 2020. We don't want to give out, we don't want to give people that information. Okay, so this here is halving the sequence. Halving it. Katrina's correct, halving it. So they're halving it each time. Can you see? 64, and you halve it, you get 32. Then you half it again, you get 16. You half it again, you get 8. So you're sort of counting, getting smaller. So this one here, if you half 8, what do we get? We get 4. We get 4. Okay, I think it's time. I think it's time to give you the last clue. The last clue. Okay, this is important. Let me just double check what the information coming through. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so this is information about an air raid shelter. An air raid shelter. So I'm going to need you to work out something for me. So, in this air raid shelter, they can make, um, they're making, it's a factory. It's a factory. So, on day one, they can make two air raid shelters on day one, yeah? On day two, they can double that to four. And then on day three, they can double that to eight. Can you work out for me? So there's a number of uh, air raid shelves we can build in the factory. On day one, they can build two. On day two, they can build four. On day three, they can build eight. On what day will they get past 200? Can you work that out for me? And that's going to be the third digit that we need. On what day will they get past 200? Come on. Work it out for me. I need your help. I need your help with this. Come on. Get your help. Let's get your help. Come on. Let's work this out. Let's work this out. Okay. What day? So keep working it out. On what day do we get past 200? Okay. What day? What day? Let's have a look. Getting a few answers coming through. I think Fiora, we are going to crack it. I have a good feeling about this. Okay, so day three, let's say, so it's two, four, eight, then day three is 16, then day four is 32, then day five is 64, then day six is 128. So what's that? Day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then, yeah, day eight. On day eight, do we get that? I think a few of us have got day eight. Do you eight? So day eight. So it's going to be day eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can add. We've got the third code. Have we skipped today? Day one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one, two, eight, two, five, six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is day eight. Is day eight. So this code, we've got three digits. We've got three digits now. We've got three digits. So, I think we're going to give this a go. Let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So, are we ready? Are we ready? We're going to have a, we're going to have a go. Okay. So, we've got three digits. We've got this. I'm going to double check that no one else is around us because we've been working hard for this code today. Let me double check. Okay. The coast is clear. Oh, it's not working. What? We did it correctly. Why is it not working? Oh, I know what the problem might be. I know what the problem might be. So we've got three codes, but it might be in a different order. It might be in a different order. So let's try rewriting out in different orders. So we've tried 628. 
So can you write down all the different ways six to eight could be? Mix up the orders, mix up the orders. So I'm going to try firstly, we're going to try two, six, eight. It could be that. It could be two, eight, six. Um, we've tried six to eight. We know it's not that. It could be, what else could it be? What else could it be? It could be six, eight, two. And it could be uh, eight, two, six. And we've got eight, six, two. So we've got six possible options, yeah? So can you see? I thought it was going to work, first of all. Let's try one. Um, let's try one, sure. Let's try 268. 268. Nope, it's not working. Let's cross it up. Let's try 286. Nope, that's not working either. That's not working either. Let's try 682. Surely that. 682. 682. Did you hear that? We've got it. It's 682. It's 682. And, hold on. It's got all the documents. It's got it. We've got the information. It's got the information. I'm going to quickly send this off to HQ. I'm going to send it off to HQ. Quickly, just give me a second. We've got it. I think we've cracked the code. I've got the information. I'm going to send it off to HQ. Okay. HQ. They're really happy with us. Do you know what? It was the right information. Well done. Well done. That's brilliant. You know what happened? We were able to find some new information about the Nazis and we've now shortened the war. All of us. Explore learning. Well done. You've done it. And the war's over. And you're all part of the effort. And do you know what? You know what? Do you know what? You're going to get a medal. We've won because of your code breaking problem solving skills. Okay, are you ready? We're going back, we're gonna get you a medal. We've done well. Are you ready? So come on. We've cracked the code. I'm so happy. Everyone's happy. Now we can speak a bit louder. There you go. There you go, Sam. There you go, Jeanette. There you go. Put that around your neck. Come on. Come on. Neck towards the screen. You've done it. You've done it. We have solved the problem and we've given a medal for our amazing math skills. I'm really happy. I'm so thrilled. Whew. That's exciting. Um but I think it's it, that's it. So we've looked at problem solving. I think it's time to move back to the present day. Don't you think? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to move back. I'm going to get rid of this jacket and put my outfit back on. And um, we're going to say goodbye to 1945. So I'm going to get my, my waistcoat back on. So I think we've looked at, again, with problems. I think the key thing is you've got to have a resilient attitude. You need to be fearless, like um, explore learning. Because you make mistakes. But you, oh, I've got it on the wrong way around. I've got it on the wrong way around. Um, you've got to keep trying. Because with maths in particular, if you make a mistake, it's okay. The key thing is, again, when we did the code, you know we tried out 6 to 8, it didn't work out, did it? And we tried out other codes. So that's that fearlessness, yeah? Colin's really happy, uh, Husna's really happy, I'm really happy, because we worked really hard. And look, we've got a medal to show it. Okay, let's go back in time, let's go back back to 2020. Glasses back on, are you ready? Jumbo, jumbo, what speed the car to go in? 88, okay, are we ready? Let's get in the car, let's go. So we're gonna get the largest, smallest, double digit number 10. Double it 20, double it 40, double it 80, add 2 cubed, 88. Woo! We're back, we're back in time. I am excited. Let me check, my phone working? My phone is working. And we're definitely back, we're definitely back in 2020. How does it feel? We played a part in cracking the codes at Bletchley Park. That was amazing. 18 miles now, we went back to the, we're back in the future now. We're back in the future. Um, and I'm so excited because we, we learned some code breaking. We learned some code breaking today. And we, we, we practice our problem solving skills. Okay, so we've got about 10 minutes left. 10 minutes left. Um, so this is the last time I see key stage two. I am back on Friday with more challenging problem solving. Again, with World War II. So again, feel free to come back um, on Friday. Um, but I'm going to, you know, I did thoughts of Mr. Seagull, positive ideas. So, positive ideas. So, today we're going to look at how it is to find a spark, how to find that spark, something that really excites you about a subject. So, I'm going to show you from my TED talk, and again, you can find this on YouTube. Um, let's have a look. So, we're going to look at my TED talk. 
So Gabriel and Alexander, let's have, have a wait here. Okay. So have a watch. So this is going to talk about how to find the spark in a subject. Mr. Seagull, you're quite a nice teacher, but your subject is dead. My subject? Dead? You think maths is boring, Emily? Yes, sadly, yes, Mr. Seagull, it's true. She's calling my subject boring. At this point, as a teacher, I have one of two responses to deal with this emergency. Either I can tell Emily, be quiet and get on with your work. Or I could engage with her. I opted for the latter. So I told the class, there's something called the Millennium Prize Problems. Seven of the most difficult problems in maths. And if you solve any of them, there's a cash prize available for one million dollars. At this point, Emily's eyes nearly burst out of her head. Oh, Mr. Seagull, can we spend every lesson working on them? And if we get them correct, we'll split the money 30 ways. Okay, calm down, Emily, calm down. So, this is about finding something that excites you about maths. So you see, in my TED talk, I talk about how there's a problem in maths, seven problems, that if you get any of them correct, they're really difficult ones, you earn a million dollars. So again, it's going to take you a long time to get towards that. But it's amazing how in maths there are exciting problems that are still being solved by real life people out there. And I find that particularly exciting. So I'm going to show you. So again, with, um, with my TED talk, um, if you go to uh, Bobby Seagull, uh, Ted Maths. So again, if you go to my Facebook page, which should be the pinned comment, and give me a like or follow, it's all there. So I posted that there. And again, this is it. So facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. I know it's our last um, session with Explore, but again, I, I continue to do stuff like magic maths. I do geography, history, like tomorrow morning a class on the Vikings at 10.45. So please do give my uh, page a follow, facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. And again, you'll find more information about my Explore brain teasers, uh, the Young Maths Award, Young Maths Positions Award. So again, it's not the end. I'm not disappearing. It's just um, it's just these eight weeks are coming to a close. So I guess facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. And I'll paste it one more time so you can have a look at that um, information there. Um, okay, so what else have I been talking about? I've been talking a bit about Monkman and Seagull's Genius Adventures. And again, this is a program that shows about, to be good at learning, it's about being fearless, like Explore do, because you try and learn new things and if you make a mistake, that's okay. So let me show you something, um, Susan, in my class, uh, or my TV show that I did on Monday. So the show is on BBC iPlayer. So if you type Monkman and Seagull, you'll find it there. And episode three is coming out on Monday. Let me show you a really cool scene that we had uh, on Monday, where we got to, we looked at cement and we blew up a quarry. Have a look at this. You'll love this little scene. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. Let me get it up, if I can get it up. So this shows you, oh, I've closed, I've closed the wrong scene. Okay, so you'd have to trust my word on that. Uh, um, it is about... I was gonna show you a scene where we got to blow up a quarry, but again, if you go to iPlayer, you can find that. Um, and the last thing is on, before we get to the final messages, um, and I've got a Q&A from parent. On Saturday at 5.30, Saturday at 5.30, I do a, a family quiz, the family quiz. Um, so that's my, the chat, the time changes each week. But again, we get a lot of Explore members turning up. There's a primary school round, there's charades, music, there's a sing-along, uh, and it's really good fun. That's 5.30 this Saturday. And again, you can find more details on my Facebook page. So I've got a Q&A from a parent coming along. So um, the, parent, the question says, my son is starting secondary school in September. What tips do you have for students moving up to secondary school? I'll give you some of my tips. So the first one I would say is be organized. Be really organized because when you go from primary to secondary, there's a lot of routines. You have specific class on specific days, specific homeworks, projects. So make sure you're really organized. Like for example, we know that during Explore, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm in maths at 10. So make sure you know when your timetable is. Make sure you do things like simple things like packing your bag the night before. So be organized. The second one is join a club. So again, it could be debate club, it could be art, it could be sports, but do something outside of your normal school lesson. And the final one is, again, people on secondary will know this already, but meet new people, meet new people. So obviously your friends from primary, 
you get to know them, but meet new people. So when you go to secondary school, I say first thing is, most important, be confident, be, be fearless. Again, with Explore, we're always about being fearless. So can you please make sure we stay fearless learners um, going on? Okay, coming up, coming up towards the end. So um, as I said, the, this week is the last week of sessions. And I got a big thank you all because you've been here right from week one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and it's been a pleasure. Your, your key stage was a great year, uh, set of years from ages seven to 11. And you can always go back and watch the lessons on um, the Explore Learning Facebook. Uh, Explore Learning, uh, they call it UK. You can find it there. Um, and also um, Explore Tutors and Explore Learning on Instagram. They post it on Instagram TV or, or their YouTube page. So you can always come back and rewatch the lessons. And you can always remember, you can book a, a trial uh, with us uh, and explore, explore learning at Code UK and explore learning members get one-to-one -one tuition uh, alongside live lessons in maths and English. Um, but yeah, so this is the last key stage two session, but again, you, I'm not going anywhere. Facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. I'm um, here. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise on Friday, on Friday, come back for our last session, our last session. So today, We've cracked problem solving. If you come back on Friday, we can crack even more problem solving. So a few thank yous. Thank you, Tamara, um, before we do our goodbye maths. Thank you to Susan. Thank you to Mayuri. Um, thank you to Vicky. Uh, thank you to Josette. Thank you to Tamara. Thank you so much. Thank you to Bo. Thank you, Lily. Um, Eloa, Josette. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caden. So I'm back on Friday. And again, I'm still on Facebook, so I'm not disappearing. So there we go. Okay, here we go. Remember, let's do this. Let's do this. So one, two, three, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Two more times. Two more times. Three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Remember, with Explore Learning, we're all fearless learners. So see you maybe on my Facebook page or uh, watch my genius adventures or my TEDx. So again, on my Facebook page, a lot of information. So thank you. I'm Bobby Seagull. We're Explore and we're about being fearless. The last one, three, two, one, go. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can. We can all do maths. See you very soon somewhere. Maybe on Friday, hopefully. Ta-ra.